you at Hagerstown. I'm so glad that you're joining us with Palm Sunday. We have a very special service for you today. We are going to experience Holy Week, or at least some of the highlights of Holy Week, in one hour. So hang on to your hat. <laughs> but uh, we're going to start off, um, and you'll notice that the order of service is slightly different, but we'll go back to our regular order next week. They'll be not Easter following. In a couple weeks. So I'm going to start off with an opening prayer. I invite you to join me as we center ourselves and take a nice deep breath. And as we exhale, we release any tensions. And if there are any concerns that are holding you down right now, any, any things that are weighing on your heart. With the next inhale, and exhale, I invite you to say the names of those you wish to pray for silently or softly, letting it go, knowing that God is present everywhere, that we can cast our cares upon Him. And as we release these burdens, we take a moment to remember who we are as an expression of spirit. Love in action. We give thanks for this time to come together to gather on this holy day to celebrate, to rejoice. And so it is. Amen. And now you'll join me in the reading of the mission statement together. Unity of the Town, a well-being community, embraces spiritual awakening through the firm of prayer and meditation, creating a positive path of abundant living for all. And now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word. Now the Daily Word, for those of you who may not know, or I think everyone present probably knows, but we will let people who are watching live stream know, is a inspirational reading material for each day, you can get it in, the, in your email inbox, or you can get a hard copy of it. And as Barbara makes her way up, we will hear what the daily word is for today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's daily word is Palm Sunday. As I enter Holy Week, I reflect on Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and how the multitudes greeted him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Like so many, I have used the sacred time of Lent to cleanse my soul of beliefs and habits that no longer serve me. I have felt blessed as I have opened my heart to the healing, cleansing waters of spirit. Now I feel ready to welcome a greater awareness of Christ within me. Every part of me quivers with eager anticipation. The world seems fresh, and I feel newly alive. I behold the Christ in me and in all others. With joy, I celebrate. With gratitude, I humbly bless the Christ in me and in everyone. And together, as we affirm the words on the screen, blessed is the one who <coughs> Okay, being filmed anonymously. Oh. 
on the live stream because the camera is set in the back today. If you don't, if you're not comfortable with that, you won't be tagged or anything like that. But, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, then just raise your hand. We'll honor that. Okay, you're on camera. No. <laughs> Let's greet our neighbors, my friends. And I just wanted to say hello. Am I on the camera there? Okay. Just want to say hello to my friends on Facebook and YouTube, or however you're watching this. We love you. We appreciate you. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. You are part of this community. Even if you're not here in person, we we uh, honor you for being part. Thank you. Thank you.
shock value and drama in making a teaching point. So he wanted to get people's attention, but what was the point in riding a donkey, especially just a couple hundred yards into town? Well, his entry was to show the holiness of the event, the holiness of who we are as well, I believe. And he was coming in, in peace. He was coming to the city of peace. Jerusalem has the name, the word peace, embedded in it. We also have a center of peace within us so that we can, recognizing our own holiness, our own divinity, we can come to that center of peace. So we're going to begin this Holy Week experience with a walking the palms meditation. You don't have to walk. You can sit quietly and meditate if you like. But if you want to use this opportunity to explore meditating in a different way, a walking meditation is done very slowly, making each step as if you were stepping on holy ground, because indeed you are, recognizing the divine identity that you have, celebrating who you are. Um, we're going to begin this meditation with the choir singing. And the choir can come on up now. And that will be followed by a guided meditation with an invitation to get up and walk if you want to. And again, it's walking slowly, being conscious of what's going on within you, each breath that you're taking, and being aware of what's going on around you as well. So, choir, take it away. <laughs> Amen. 
Continue to sit quietly in this awareness of the presence of God within. If you would like to turn this into a walking meditation, I invite you to do so, remembering that each step we take is on the holy. Remember with each breath you take that you are indeed very holy. So we go into a period of silence, a period of communion.
breathing in peace. Today we are welcoming a greater awareness of the Christ consciousness within. Within remembering this holy week. Now when Jesus entered in Jerusalem, his fame had preceded him. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead, and the people were excited to, to meet or see him, this person who was performing miracles. People shouted out to greet him. The people with the orange cards shouted out in a loud voice to Hosanna! 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 Yes, yes. But I think that the religious leaders became very jealous of all of this popularity that Jesus was receiving. They saw him as a threat. So on one day, when Jesus entered the temple at Jerusalem, a place that he respected, a place where he taught, a place where he, he also learned, I suspect. And he, he can't believe what is happening. It has turned into something of a commercial enterprise. And of course, he overturns the tables that were set up. And it's almost as if the church or the temple had sold out, if you will, to material goods. What we know and what we teach in unity is that often there are times in our own lives that we need to overturn or overcome. Perhaps our focus has been on acquisition, acquiring things, that we may need to bring balance back into our lives and focus on our spiritual life. The temple, in immunity, we look at everything metaphysically, but the temple is referred to even in the Christian scriptures as our body. Know you not that you are the temple of the living God, and that uh, the temple of God, which temple you are, the, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul says. So this identifies the meaning of the temple as our own inner being. In the book Talks on Truth by Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, Fillmore says that deep within the being of each person, there is a religious service going on, conducted by the Christ, conducted by our higher self. This service is going on all the time in celebration and acknowledgement of 
the divinity within all. Now understand, Fillmore is not saying a literal service, but maybe, I don't know. No, we won't go there. <laughs> but it's a service of celebration. It's the spark at the very center of our being that keeps us alive. The, the being of our temple within, it, it keeps us connected. It keeps us remembering who we are. So let's take a moment just to pause now. Get in touch with that service that's going on within you, that your own inner worship service, casting out whatever fears and overturning whatever blocks may be keeping us from feeling that connection. And as we go to our heart space, let's hold sacred space for this day. Recognizing the presence of God here and now within each person all around us. And we hold sacred space for each other as we recognize the presence of God within them. We hold sacred space for other houses of worship seeing that presence of God within all. So throughout this service, I invite you to keep returning to your heart space, holding that sacred space for all. So back to Jesus in the temple. With all the corruption that was taking place in this house of worship, this and Jesus' reaction to it, or response to it, this hastens the plans for the arrest of Jesus. The authorities obviously did not appreciate what he was doing, what he was teaching. I think it's because they, they understood the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law. On Tuesday, Jesus is confronted by the religious leaders. They said with loud voices, with yellow cards, loud voices, <laughs> Those are great troublemakers. <laughs> so the authorities questioned Jesus, and Jesus answered with parables as he has his mock was. And when the authorities, the religious leaders, figured out that Jesus was actually talking about them in the parables, they wanted to arrest him then and there, but he, they feared he was still too popular. On Wednesday, Jesus is anointed with a costly perfume and oil by an unnamed woman. Now, the metaphysical meaning of to anoint is to uh, pour out the spirit of love on one who has faith in God. Pour out the spirit of love on one who has faith in God. So we're going to do our own moment of anointing and pass out, pass out the oil. And I'm going to ask you, first of all, before you use any of it, if you get drug tested, there's CBD oil in this. It's not going to get you high. Okay, don't worry about that. But it, it may show up in a drug test. So just... Uh, if you choose to for, uh, participate, just you know, go ahead and take a, a drop on your, on your hand and then pass it on. It doesn't, you don't need much, a little bit of oil goes a long way. And just keep passing it on until everybody has a little bit of oil. So as we anoint ourselves, let us know that we are pouring out that spirit of love. And it's coming from within our hearts. That's that center of love. We are pouring out that spirit of love, anointing ourselves with love, seeing ourselves enfolded in love, knowing that we have this faith, the faith of God within us. And then if you like, I invite you to think of someone. Maybe they're going through a hard time. And just mentally pour that love out onto them. 
anoint them, seeing them as the expression of God, seeing them as the face of God. together. 
when we drink of the wine or eat of the grape today, this is symbolic of divine life. So I want you to remember that when we, we're going to have a responsive green first, and then I'll cue you in when to eat the cracker and when to eat, eat the grape, okay? Okay. Just make sure everybody's got one. So to begin with, take, eat, and this is my body, and together I take in the bread of life. I am filled with the radiant living substance of God. I bless my body now, knowing it is the temple of the living God. And then go ahead and eat your take your pepper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. I am filled with the new wine of spirit. My mind and heart are renewed by the revitalizing power of love. And we take our faith to symbolize this. in you, the hope of glory, you will know the truth, and it will set you free. Together, in faith and gratitude, I will dedicate and reconsecrate myself to the ever-expanding awareness of my true self. So we now embody divine substance and divine life. This is really just a reminder because we already embody it. Okay? So during the meal, Jesus unexpectedly gets up and washes the disciples' feet. I did consider doing a foot wash. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but I think I wanted to mention it because it's such a loving and humble example of service. And we are asked to serve as Jesus did in the Christian scriptures, it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So as we listen to this next song by Brent and Patty, just think, think of how we might be able to serve. How much I've been blessed with people to love, some peace of mind, and that a penis. It makes me want to pass along this love I've received as a way of giving thanks for what's been given to me. I've got a strong heart. I've got a strong love. And I Thank you. 
Every day I wake before I open my eyes 
two songs. That's all I can say. <laughs> so at this time, we're saying goodbye to our Facebook friends, our uh, YouTube friends. We're so glad that you've been part of this community. You've been joined us today. We bless you. We hope to see you next week. Please leave a comment, if you will. Let us know that you were here. Yeah.